Tonight on Access TV, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Brian Chikoki, Liz Barrett, Ambrose Jones, Jeff Norris. This week's host, Christopher Titus. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Titus! Gotham Comedy Live on Access. I am Christopher Titus. Yes, thank you. Yes, this this is a live comedy show going out right now, live around the world. Frankly, it's just a couple hundred thousand people. That's not the point. It's good to be here in New York, this fetid stew of humanity. I love to be here in the winter too, when the snow drifts of green garbage bags blow. I love this town. I'm kidding, but the point is. It's good to be here. It's good. The world's great. Right? Isn't it great to be in the world right now, huh? The whole thing in Iraq worked out smoothly. Didn't that go well? And we're buddies with Russia again. It's fucking brilliant, isn't it? No one's importing Ebola into the States. It's a great time to be alive. Holy God, man. We've got school shootings all the time. Terrorism. Bank of America customer service. <laughs> I told the guy on the phone, yeah, you fix it or I will talk about you every show, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, on live television so they can't cut it, I swear to God I will. <laughs> do terrorists do any demographic research? <laughs> terrorists have, they have gone after New York and Boston, two places in our country that you cannot terrorize people. <laughs> You can stab someone here in New York and they just go, I don't know you. What is, what is, damn, this is my good shirt, asshole. People in Boston beat each other's ass over hockey when they like the same team. Like, terrorists, go after Seattle. It's just stoners and lesbians, man. You could, you could terrorize Seattle with pimento loaf. Hey man, they've got some weird meat and it's not gluten free. Get the Subaru and the kayak. We are out of here. No, we don't have time to recharge the electric bike. Let's go. Of course we'll stop for lattes. But Boston, really, they went after Boston. The second that bomb went off in Boston, everybody in Boston went, we're going to find these guys and they're going to end up bleeding out in a boat. And that is what happened. And what is your stance bombing the Boston Marathon? We will never let the Reebok covered foot of oppression hold us down. Like, how bad can you hate sweatbands, booty socks, and Kenyans? <laughs> and I don't, here's what I don't, I don't understand why terrorists hate us. How can you hate this country? How can you spend 30 minutes in America and hate this? We have strip clubs and go-kart tracks everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes in the same complex. <laughs> Because it is hard to find a sitter. <laughs> and I get why they're pissed off. I get why they're pissed off. You, like, you were raised in some horrible sand-covered nightmare, you know? It, I'm not making that up. It's 120 degrees all the time. You got two views, oil derrick or camel ass. That's it. <laughs> it's summer all the time, but not a bikini to be seen. <laughs> got to masturbate to a woman blinking fast. <laughs> I get it, I, under, I understand the pain. But to you people from those countries that hate us, come to America, we love our immigrants here, we were built on immigrants, enjoy the fruits of this great land. And then when you go back home to visit your people, blow some shit up there, okay? Cause that's where you got mad. Do you wanna know how amazing our country is? We have people from this country right now that should be terrorists and they're not. If a bomb went off tomorrow and the Cherokee Nation claimed responsibility, we would all go, okay, yeah, all right, sure, yeah. Yeah, I get it, of course I get it, yeah. <laughs> you would see Anderson Cooper, the FBI has determined it definitely was the Cherokee Nation that committed this heinous and brutal act. The FBI has responded with this statement, we're cool. <laughs> 
Frankly, we're surprised it took this long. We knew the casinos would not be enough. And I'm so tired. Aren't you tired of hearing about terrorism? You guys have had it the worst, man. It's just every day, new terrorists, terrorist threat, terrorists. I'm so tired of hearing about it. And it soaks in, doesn't it? At one point, soak in. And I got freaked out one day. And I was like, well, how much terrorism is there really? So I went to that, uh, that pressure cooker bomb-making website on, you know, to see how many people had hit it. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have no problem getting on an airplane for the next three years. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I'm going to be the naked guy at TSA going, I was trying to write some jokes! <laughs> I go to the terrorist bomb-making website, 32,000 plus people had hit the pressure cooker bomb-making website. That's a lot of terrorism, right? That's a lot of people. And I got scared. And so then I went to Kitten Plays With Yarn. <laughs> 6.2 million hits, yes! We are a furry creature loving people, ladies! I tell you what, I'll put 6.2 million cat people up against 30,000 terrorists any day of the week. Yeah, you get all your little terrorists in the stadium. We are 30,000 strong. We are going to destroy this imperialistic nation. Oh, no, you aren't, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Do you see how many of us there are, my friend? That better be a goulash in that pot. <laughs> or myself and Captain Jack Sparrow Eater are going to be up your ass. That's right, I said Captain Jack Sparrow Eater. Yes, I did. So you're like, oh, that's a good name for a cat. Oh, that's, like a, that's a cute name for a cat. Uh, it's bad news all the time. You know what's pissing me off too about the bad news is that, is that we, we, we look for bad news, then we figure out how to, like, if something kills us as Americans, we figure it out, we spend billions of research, that kills us, let's fix it. But we don't fix it. We figure out what kills us, and then we don't give a flying rat's ass anymore. Case in point, cigarettes. Cigarettes kill... Everybody who uses them, it's, you, the government knows this. Government, cigarettes kill, we heard. What do we do? Put a label on it, good idea. <laughs> That's all they did. I guess it's on you now. It says it on the pack. This kills your ass dead. You will live 11 years less than everybody you know. I know, I read it, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Look around, I don't want to be here that long anyway. So prescription medication, we know this. Prescription medication kills more people than car accidents every year. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> people don't know how to dose. <laughs> it's one pill for every two beers. <laughs> yeah, don't go with me on that, all right? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I know Philip Seymour Hoffman makes one mistake and I gotta do a disclaimer every show. Don't you dare ooh that joke. Don't you fucking dare ooh that joke. I'm sorry, 50 bags of heroin? Did he not think that might go sideways on him? Yeah, because your judgment is always so good after that first bag of heroin, are you? Well, I'm just full of heroin right now. I could not shoot another ounce of heroin if I wanted to. I'm gonna put these 49 bags of heroin away for later. Cause I just had me a heroin Thanksgiving. <laughs> Gonna unbuckle my belt. I'm so much heroin. Was he going to Costco? <laughs> Was it Kirkland heroin? <laughs> All right, that joke is just for members. <laughs> and, I, and by the way, I, I know that last bit is a little heinous. And when I write something heinous, I always do some research because although I'm an asshole, I want to be accurate. I found out that 10 bags of heroin is called the bindle and 50 bags of heroin is called, sir? Yeah, see, I was looking at you. Oh, that white guy, he can't be pointing at me, I'm white. <laughs> he actually looked at the black dude behind him. That is so wrong and so New York. All right. I found, 50 bags of heroin is called a brick. And here's a tip for everybody. If you are buying anything in brick form, except for bricks, <laughs> cigarettes, cheese, heroin, dildos, it will kill you. I don't know where you get a brick of dildos. Costco, probably. Ladies, uh, she, didn't, she didn't say anything. She went, I don't know for real. All right, you guys ready to get the show started? Are you ready? Yet, 
Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Ryan Chipoke is taking the stage when we return. Did you apologize to the black guy for the reference earlier? Because we, we can't get the Oscars to do it, so at least you can. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard this comic on Sirius XM. He's a very funny cat. Give it up for Brian Chikaki. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, yeah. You guys are like, I didn't know Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> Can't ruin my mood. I'm in a good mood, man. I just got married this last year. Yeah. I met my wife on an internet dating site called I Can't Believe It Got To This dot com. <laughs> cool, we got some matches here. Cool, cool. Now, I did the internet thing for a little while because, like, I don't know, man, I was not a ladies' man in high school or college because I was kind of small. You'd never know it by looking at me. But the thing is, is like, it's a, it's a visual joke. All right, cool. <laughs> Let's be honest, man, women see small men differently. You do, you see small guys differently, and sometimes you say weird stuff to us. Like, a girl came up to me after a show one time, she's like, oh my God, you are so cute, I want to put you in my pocket and feed you M&Ms. <laughs> that's a weird thing to say to somebody, you know what I mean? Like, that's not a pickup line, that's like a, that's like a Silence of the Lambs kind of like, you know, thing. <laughs> Something you say to somebody, you know. My wife uh, moved into my apartment a few years ago and she brought a cat with her and I'm not really a cat person. Ever hear of cats, cat people, cats? Cool, F four or five single women? All right, cool. The uh, thing is, no, the thing is like, you know, and I don't like cats, man, but like I let the cat in and it was, what pissed me off is she loved the cat way more than me, which was kind of insulting because the cat was like 16 years old and didn't even meow right anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I used to wander around my apartment like, man, man, like she'd been smoking Lucky since she was a kitten, you know, man, <laughs> someone clean up my litter box. <laughs> coughed up a hairball like a week after moving in, which really freaked me out. Like my only experience with cats and hairballs was like the Tom and Jerry cartoons. You know, it was a cute furry little ball you can play with it, but that is not what happens <laughs> in real life. And it threw me off, because cats are very graceful animals, man. I used to wander around my apartment like she was doing Project One Way, you know what I mean? Like walked into my kitchen and suddenly this Pentecostal exorcism started coming over to cat. She hunkered over like James Brown waiting for a hit, you know? And, and like, I don't know why they call it coughing up. Like, that's a polite term for demonic puking. She hocked up this phlegm ball, like alien pod wrapped in hair. I actually thought another cat was gonna come out of this thing. We'd have two cats, a wet one and a dry one, you know? And they make like a weird noise too. Like human beings, you can't tell someone's gonna throw up, but a cat will send you a signal they're about to do it. They make this sound, it's like <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, the floodgates are about to open up. You know what I mean? Like. No, and it's weird, because her cat's favorite thing to do was to throw up underneath my bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, which was like the worst thing to wake up from a peaceful slumber to... <laughs> and like, I don't want to clean that up during the day, let alone at 3 a.m., so I'd be like upset in denial. I'd be like, oh man, maybe she's not throwing up. Maybe she's listening to techno music on an iPod or something. You know? It's like... <laughs> I like sex, though. You guys like sex? Man, round of applause. Yeah. I mean, like sex with another person? You know, just like this? Let's be honest, like, masturbation's overrated. Wouldn't you say a little overrated? All right, maybe not in this room, all right. 
A lot of big forearms up in here. It's like big old Popeye night here at Gotham Live. You know, it's like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's like, that ain't Gold's Gym. That's like high-speed internet right there. That's, you know, sort of. And like, like women are so much more classy than men when it comes to masturbation. You got all the toys and whatnot. Like, any ladies here have a friend in the drawer? A little friend? Like, that's a big yes right there. Like, I don't mean, I don't mean friends with benefits. I mean friends with batteries. We're on the same page here, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it's like, and I actually, I don't understand what the vibration's all about. Like, I actually dated a woman one time who was like, you know, point blank with me. She's like, just so you know, I, I, I can't orgasm unless I have my little friend. I was like, how am I supposed to compete with that, you know? It's like, am I supposed to hop into bed and be like... <laughs> you getting close? I'm getting nauseous up here. I'm gonna hock up a hairball here in a second. <laughs> A horny crowd. All right, cool. <laughs> I always look at man. I'm married now, but I, I'll always look at beautiful women, man. But I realize my tastes are changing. Cause I saw this girl the other day. She had been like 20 or 21. She's wearing a skin tight mini skirt, like the pumps, the skin tight top, bare midriff, cleavage hanging out, and then across her chest, in glittery letters, it said "Guess." I was like, whore. <laughs> That's my guess. I mean, not the research, but that's my first guess, you know? <laughs> I don't want to be negative about it, though, man, because there's too many negative people, man. Twitter, everything, negative. All over Facebook, negative, man. You can't even do anything anymore without somebody making a negative comment about it, man. You try to eat better, people will be like, you're a health nut. Go to church every day, you're a Jesus freak. Give the woman you love all the attention she deserves. They call you a stalker. <laughs> I thought it meant you were focused. <laughs> thought women liked that. <laughs> Stalking's illegal, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I, was, I was surprised too. They'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, arrest you for that. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not built for jail, so. <laughs> Learned that on cable. Like, so obsessed with jail in this country and making TV shows about it. I was watching Lock Up Raw with my brother one time. He was trying to scare me. He's like, yo, man, you ever go to prison, you better join a gang. I was like, I don't know anything about gangs. Like, I did West Side Story in high school, but I don't think that <laughs> constitutes gang experience, man. I don't think being a jet for four weeks is going to help out much. There's a ride in the yard, you know? You don't bring this to a fight, you know what I mean? Like, that's like... That's all I got, man. Imagine that first day out, like you just mess with the wrong dude. <laughs> Plenty of flavor left in this lollipop T bone. Bring it on me. Fucking bring it. <laughs> I wish I was a badass just once in my life. I don't scare people, man. I really don't, man. It's like, here's how unscary I actually am. I'm in a dark parking garage. A few months ago, beautiful young woman coming down the steps. I'm going up the steps, made eye contact, and never once did she look at me like, oh, this man might hurt me or rob me. She looked at me like, oh, this poor kid lost his mom. <laughs> That's insulting. I was like, I don't even scare you a little bit. She's like, don't worry, we'll find her. <laughs> Weird thing was, we did. <laughs> I'm glad to be out of the dating scene, though, man. Because it's like, you know, there's too many fake people in the dating scene. People don't present themselves correctly in the dating scene, man. I was like, I went out with a woman one time a few years ago. She tried to tell me she was a vegetarian. She wasn't, man. She was like, she got all arrogant with She's like, just so you know, I'm a vegetarian. But I will eat chicken if it's a special occasion. I was like, just so you know, I'm monogamous. But I will cheat if the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> She's not a vegan, though, man. A friend of mine is a vegan, man. He eats so healthy, he looked like he was dying, man. I was like, my friend Tom is totally vegan. He does Bikram yoga, runs marathons. He's got this sick, gaunt look on his face, right? And he brags, like, hey, man, I haven't eaten meat in 10 years. I'm like, look, I haven't fucking eaten anything in 10 years, man. <laughs> Looks half dead. Took me to an organic health food store. Everyone looked dead. It was like the thriller video in there, man. I was like... <laughs> it's like, excuse me, where's the soy milk? I was like... <laughs> You guys are awesome. My name is Brian Chicago. Thank you very much.
Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Liz Barrett is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right, everybody, this is a live show, and how do you make a comic poop their pants on their TV debut, put it on a live show? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a very funny lady, Liz Barrett. Give it up. Buddy, how are ya? Oh my God. When I was seven, my mom was about to hit me. And I said to her, hey, can we discuss this? She never hit me again. But now she wants to talk every day. And all I think is, God, can you just hit me? I just, I can't. Ah, oh, talk to my dad today. That was a lot of awkward silences. I swear his tombstone's gonna read, I'll put your mother on. <laughs> when I was in school, my teacher told me I had the humor of Bob Newhart. I thought it was the greatest compliment. I ran home to tell my mother and she must have thought, Phew, don't have to worry about that one coming home pregnant. Uh, once, I masturbated so much my cat left. <laughs> that is just a cautionary tale for all you kids out there. Did you see how uh, women were protesting that hurricanes were only being named female names? <sighs> Way to focus, ladies. <laughs> I... We may not have equal pay, but we have Hurricane Eddie. I don't understand it. I... Uh... I don't go see Tom Hanks movies. I don't. He lost me at Forrest Gump. You know why? That movie taught me one thing. It's that a retarded man will always do better than a woman. I got a Facebook joke. Here it comes. Facebook is so whiny. Can you imagine your great-grandmother's Facebook post? It'd be like, I washed five loads of laundry down by the creek today. Hurt my finger, it had to come off. And oh, I'm pregnant again. Oh, I'm married, I've been married a long time. I know that's hysterical, right? And I, uh, I was observing the date, a date the other night. That is adorable. There appears to be a lot of shaving and plucking and listening that no longer occurs in my relationship. <laughs> the other day I said to him, hey, are you listening to me? And he said, no. I was okay with that. Because that's the beauty of marriage. It's not like I won't see him tomorrow. And I know what you're thinking. God, he's a lucky man to come home to that much enthusiasm.
I know what you're wondering. Even on my wedding day, I was like, I do. <laughs> he gets me, though. The other day, I said to him, you know who I hate? He said, I can make you a list. <laughs> I went on a vacation with the in-laws. <sighs> that got a little boring. <laughs> I don't know. At one point, my sister and, all, and I were talking about what our ne favorite numbers were. <sighs> if you're wondering, hers is 24. <laughs> it's divisible by so much. Went home to see my parents recently, or as I like to refer to it, the land of stress eating. <laughs> I don't know about you, but there always comes a point when you're at home when you're like, it's 2 a.m., I'm eating unsweetened chocolate. What is going on? I don't, I don't understand. My parents are three meals a day, you know, at regimented times type of couple, right? I was teasing my dad. I said, Dad, have you ever missed a meal? He said, oh. Elizabeth, I remember it well. <laughs> 1980, I skipped lunch. He said it was my nom. I said, that's weird, Dad. You were in nom. I don't, I don't understand that situation. Ah. Uh. My coworker said to me the other day, it don't matter. And I wanted to say, oh, but it do. <laughs> you know who uses the phrase sweet spot? Assholes. <laughs> I saw my niece's little league team. She's eight. Team's called the Tomboys. <sighs> Why don't you just call them the Little Dykes? <laughs> I was on the subway the other day and the guy on the platform, the homeless guy said, hey bitch, give me a dollar. And I thought, you're not really buttering me up for this transaction. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Anybody else? I've started to go to bed at night praying my belly fat turns out to be a 20 pound tumor. I don't, anybody else? Oh, wouldn't that be fantastic? One little hospital visit. I read an article about Channing Tatum Spoiler alert, school was hard. <laughs> I read an article, 72 things you need to know about Reese Witherspoon, and I thought, that's like 71 and a half too many. I don't, <laughs> I don't actually like magazines. They're always trying to get us to be perfect. I want a magazine for someone like me, someone who's trying to be okay. I think I'd call that magazine Getting By. <laughs> the logo would be a half clenched fist. Because who can bother making a whole one? There'd be articles in Getting By like sometimes showering is half the battle. Probably not getting better, but at least it'll be different. <laughs> what to do when you burn through plans A and B. <laughs> Dusting with your hands. <laughs> I gotta go. I got a big night planned. going home to take off my bra.
Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Ambrose Jones is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to Access, Gotham Comedy Live. I just got back from Scotland. I did a thing called a, a big festival over New Year's called Hogmanay, which means, uh, yeah, means vomit where you stand. I, uh, wow, uh, reminds me of New York a little bit. The guy I'd like to bring to the stage right now, a very funny cat. You see him on Uncontrolled Comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambrose Jones, give it up. <laughs> Yes, 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 thank you, 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 thank you. Love coming here to New York City. How y'all doing? Y'all doing all right? Good, good. I guess y'all can tell by the way I sound I'm not from here. That's right. I'm from a big city, though. I'm from originally uh, Chicago, Illinois. That's right. Oh, we got Chicago in the house? Chicago? Okay. We the only ones still alive from Chicago, ain't it? We the only ones? I've been staying in Memphis for the last 15 years of my life. I consider that my hometown now, because while I've been there, I have acquired a driver license, a baby mama, and a patronizer prostitution charge. I guess, it, <laughs> guess that's qualified being your hometown, don't it? <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee got this place called Jack Proto's Chicken. That's where all the prostitutes hang out in front of. You can go over there and get you a two-piece breast, white meat or dark meat, and the chicken is good, too. The chicken, <laughs> yeah. They got white and black prostitutes over there, they do. I keep telling my mama, you're supposed, you're supposed to move us to safety. She moved us from Chicago to Memphis. That's like moving us from the number one murder capital of the world to the number two murder capital, ain't it? Like, what you trying to do, kill me twice, mama? I love it, though. I've been trying to move. I can't. I got a nine-year-old son there. His mom and I separated. I think that was probably my fault because I grew up in the house with stepdads and I wanted him to experience that also. <laughs> yeah. I felt like I had stepdads, you're going to have some too. God damn it. That's, you know. Yeah, good boy. His mom and I was together until he was like three years old. I really don't feel like he cherished the time I was there, you know? <laughs> I used to try to hold him all the time. He want to start crying and go to his mom. I was like, all right, you're going to miss me when I'm gone. You know? <laughs> I'm not going to be here forever. I'm not. <laughs> Parenting has changed. You know, back in the day we was growing up, our parents told us what we was going to do and told us what we needed, right? Nowadays, kids tell us what they want and what they going to do, ain't it? Took my son to get his haircut. He going to tell me how he wanted his haircut, too. He's like, Daddy, I want a mohawk. I was like, well, I want you to pay for your haircut. <laughs> He was like, I can't do it, Daddy. I ain't got the money. I was like, exactly. That's why you getting a bald head then, because you don't have no money. I done been to your school. I done seen what them little boys fell and wearing. They wearing mohawks. You making C's. I'm not going to push you over the edge. You know what I mean? I'm a, good, I'm a good provider for them, though, I am. That's why I got to watch my finances and get on a budget. That's what all the financial advisors tell you. Get on a budget. Make sure every dollar is allocated. I grew up without nothing, so you want me to deprive myself as an adult, too? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to buy everything I see. That's what I'm going to do. I don't like a budget. I don't even shop at budget rent a car. I don't. I go to Enterprise. Budget is, budget is too complicated. Got to get my finances on track. I went to Eagle Fact Check my credit score. Just found out my credit score is around the same number as my age. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I'm 32. My credit score 28. That's a, it's kind of hard to get approved for a brand new car when you are older than your credit score. Did you know that? I tried. They told me my credit was so bad, my co-signer is going to need a down payment of $2,500. I just looked at them and said, no, nah, my mama ain't going to do that. You can just, you can just ball that application up and just show me where to ride along more. Is that, sir? That's a, Looking forward to getting me a new car, though. Right now, I got a 1996 Toyota Corolla. It runs good. Take me to point A to point B. The only thing about that, sometime my destination be at point C. Now I need a ride the rest of the way. 
people want to know where I'm parked at the bus stop, I'd be like, that's where my car cut off at. I need your jumper cables, not your criticism, sir. That's what I'm... I do the old maintenance. I do my own maintenance on my car. I've been changing my own spark plugs and wires on my car for the last five years. That could be the reason why I still run it good with 200,000 miles on it. And that could be the reason why the oil is leaking tremendously, too. <laughs> that damn car leaking a lot of oil. You know, you're supposed to change your oil every three months or every 3,000 miles. I change my oil every two days or when I hear the motor knock. <laughs> just, just whichever one occur first. My car leaking so much oil, when it's time for me to put oil in my car, I just pour it on the ground, because that's where it's going in the first place. I don't even pour it in the car, I just pour it on the ground and drive off. My car seemed to ride a little better. That's what it is. Ain't nothing wrong with having an older car. Just, if you do have an older car, it will let you know when you're doing something wrong, though. It will. That's, what, that's the advantage about it. It will let you know when you're doing something wrong. I got pulled over by the police the other day. He gonna tell me I was doing 75 mile per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. I just looked at him and I said, I know you lying because I didn't feel my steering wheel shake. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, usually when I go over 40, my steering wheel starts shaking. <laughs> I didn't feel that, sir. I didn't. I said, you need to go back and check your radar detector over again. He gonna walk off and come back and say, I'm gonna give you a seatbelt ticket. I said, I'll take that. I ain't gonna take no speeding ticket. I know if I would've been going 75, my car would've been jumping all across this road. Then you would've had to give me a ticket for drifting then. That's what you... It's hard dating when you got an older car. Yeah, dating is hard, period, though, ain't it? You know, especially when you get older, your patience wear thin. You know, you meet a woman nowadays, what's the first thing y'all wanna do when you meet a man? You wanna go out to eat, don't you? I don't know who started this right here. Hey. Usually we'll take them to the house and watch a movie. Now they want to go out to eat. I want to go out to eat. My friend told me about this new restaurant downtown. I want to go out to eat. Like then you take them out to eat all the time while y'all dating. Then you get into a relationship with them. Now you got to hear them complain about what? They wait now. Ooh, my stomach getting big. Like, ooh, I gained two pounds yesterday. Ooh, I got to get back in the gym. I'd be like, you ain't think about that when I took you out 57,000 <laughs> times. You didn't say that when you were stuffing that shrimp in your face, huh? Like, now you worry about your stomach now? I be making these women mad. They be calling me, talking about they want to go out to eat. I be like, I ate already. <laughs> like, you should have called me five minutes ago, baby. I just got done eating, I did. She be like, what you eat? I ate some beans and rice. You can come over and get you some if you want some. <laughs> Cook me enough to last me the next month. I did. <laughs> That's one thing. You can't tell no woman nothing about no beans. She don't want to hear nothing about it. Do it. I don't want no doggone beans. I got to taste for some sushi. I'd be like, you better come wrap these beans and rice up in their cornbread then. Cause That's all the sushi you're going to be eating over here. You ever had pinto bean sushi? You ever... <laughs> It got plenty of fiber in it to help you get that stomach down, you can play. <laughs> Boy, I, be, I believe having older cars are hereditary in my family, though. It is, though. It is. You know, my full name is Ambrose Jones III. You know, when I had my son, everybody gonna ask me, you gonna name him Ambrose Jones IV to keep the legacy alive? I was like, to keep what legacy alive? Legacy of alcoholics and warehouse forklift drivers? <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I'm finna end this legacy right now. It ain't, it ain't gonna be no more Ambroses. This is it. I'm like, y'all should have named me Ambrose Jones the last, because this finna be the last of this situation right here. All right, New York, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Jeff Norris is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. All right, all right. Please welcome to the stage. This guy performs all over the country and he probably has a body in his trunk. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Norris, give it up. All right, all right. New York City, how are you? Ah, good.
to be back home. I, uh, I, just, I just got off of a plane. I just landed this afternoon. Uh, I, I work for the cruise ships. I'm, I'm not bragging or anything. Two weeks out to sea, you have no idea. You want to talk about a small room? I took a shower when I first got on the ship. I bent over. To, I dropped the soap. I bent over. My ass flushed the toilet and turned on the TV. <laughs> All in one motion. It was hard. It's so good to be home. Don't you love traveling? Especially airport travel. Oh, my God. They fly me out of Newark, New Jersey, okay? Now, if you've never been in Newark, I'm sure you've seen it on an episode of Cops, okay? <laughs> Horrible neighborhood. An airport, going to the airport's very confusing. I type in my GPS, Newark Airport. She said, good fucking luck. That's what she told me, right? It's very confusing. You pull in there. All the signs are, are very crazy. I'm flying United. Okay, United. United. Right lane, okay, right lane. What's this sign say? United to boarding flights, left lane. Oh, you son of a bitch, left lane, okay. <laughs> Passenger drop off, make a right. I make a right, next thing you know, I'm on Martin Luther King Boulevard <laughs> in the heart of Newark at three in the morning dressed like this, okay? <laughs> I get out of the car to ask for directions. At that very moment, two very tall, large, intimidating black men approached me. And I'm going to be honest with all of you, okay? <laughs> I got a little nervous. I did. Not because I'm racist or anything, just because I watch the fucking news. You see, so that don't make me a bad fella, you see? Loosen up, folks. The black guy's laughing. Take it easy, will you? It's, and, I, and, I, and I'm a big fan of TV, and with TV comes some great commercials, you know? But I often wonder, can you ever take a commercial and put it in real life situation and get the same result? So I thought, what better place to try than Newark at three in the morning, you know? So as the two big black guys got right in front of me, I just closed my eyes and I went, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, right? Yeah, I, uh, I said that, ma'am, I did. And uh, <laughs> nobody showed up, nobody. And then the black guys looked at me and they went, we are gangsters, bum, 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 bum. And they, they, uh, they drove me to the airport, so that was nice. Uh, Newark Airport is trying very hard to be patriotic and I respect that, you know? You walk in there, they got the American flag up wherever you look, which is beautiful to see. Being English is the 14th most spoken language in our country. So it's nice that they have a flag up to remind you where the hell you are, you know? Then they have signs up, never forget 9-11, absolutely not. Support our troops, amen. Then they had a sign that made me very nervous. It said, please, we rely on you. <laughs> Go, me? Oh, shit, right? <laughs> Says, if you see something, say something, right? So I'm on duty, I'm looking around. I got, okay, if I see something, I'm gonna say. Now, I'm, my wife and I are first online, and the head of the TSA comes up to me and my wife. You ready for this? The head honcho. They need to really get the proper personnel to do this job. Because this guy's supposed to protect the plane. He comes up to me and my wife, and he says, I need to do your ticket, and I need to do the boarding party so you can get any plane outside the window. You got to give me all that time, right? I don't know what to do. I look back at this sign. I'm like, um, I see something, okay? I see something, he's over here, right? It was horrible. I mean, honest to God, I mean, but life is good. I'm getting ready to celebrate uh, 10 years of marriage, which is beautiful. Uh, yeah. It's good. In this crazy, judgmental world, I am in what you call an interracial marriage, yes. And I say that proudly, I do, because uh, obviously I'm Irish and uh, my wife is Italian. Now, um, oh, that's it is. It's like gangs in the U.S. You should have seen Christmas. It's like all in the family meets Goodfellas Casino and Raging Bull at my house. You have no idea. They all came over from Italy this Christmas. You had no idea, right? It, it's, it, it was unbelievable. I go into the kitchen. I go, Mom, Dad, the girl I was telling you about is in the living room with her family. They're thinking it's an Irish family, you know? Mother, sister, father, brother, dog. That's it. They have no idea there's a union meeting going on in the living room, right? If all you folks were my in-laws, my father comes out, drunk Archie Bunker, takes one look in the living room, he does this. Whoa, geez, there, would you look at this, huh? <laughs> hey, you eat it there, you see what the hell your son brought home there? I got 120 Italians in my living room and no plastic on my sofas in there, right? <laughs> I panic. My mother was no better. She walks out like Edith Bunker. She sees everybody, she's like, oh my God, it's so nice to have everybody in our home, yeah. I haven't seen this many Italians in one room since I had jury duty. I'm like, no, <laughs> Then 
I met her father. I met her father for the first time. It was like meeting Robert De Niro on a bad day, you know? He walked in the room, the house got cold. She's like, Daddy, I want you to meet Jeff. He turned around, I got this. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. He said everything three times, honest to God. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Which was ironic because he said, I'm only going to say this once. I'm only going to say this once, right? It's crazy. I thought I was done meeting everybody, you know? I went, hey, it was so nice to meet everybody. I got an idea. <laughs> Let's go outside and do something Italian now, huh? Let's go outside and cement the backyard, <laughs> right? Because they love concrete, sir. They do. They hide things under there, you know? But every Italian family, they all got the little angry guy in the house, you know? The little short guy. He's usually like over 55 and under five feet tall. That's my brother-in-law. He's, he's like Joe Pesci running around the house. I go, it's nice to meet everybody. From my knee, I hear this. Okay, 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 okay. What the frick? What am I, a mirage over here? Oh, you didn't see me, you fat Irish prick? I thought you saw it. I picked them up, I burped them. I had no idea what to do, right? It was crazy. <laughs> Marriage life is good. Uh, I have uh, no children. I have pets. I have, uh, I have a lot of pets in my house. I have uh, three dogs and two cats. Uh, the dogs were mine, and the cats came with my wife, and I had no choice because I said I do. <laughs> so... They're like step cats now. It's crazy, you know? And I, I tried to get along with them, but they're old, man. One, they are. One got a colostomy bag in the house. I need this. Uh, one cat, three whiskers, one eye. That's it. All day. All day, he's like, I want to go left. I want to go left. I want to go left, right? There's no arguing what's a better pet. Dog owners, you know what I'm talking about. Dog owners, you come home from a hard day's work, right? You put the key in the door, you walk in, who's there waiting for you but your dog? Your buddy, wagging his tail, letting you know it's safe to come in. But the dog's so excited to see you, he's been practicing all day, right? You walk in, your dog's like, hiya, pal, everything's fine. Nobody called, I started cooking, okay? Take it easy, right? They love you so much, but at least you know your house is safe, right? I know there's some cat owners here. Cat owners, you have no security. You really don't. <laughs> cat owner, you come home from work, you put the key in the door, you walk in, nobody's there. They don't care, right? <laughs> there could be a guy in the closet with an ax. <laughs> Next thing you know, here comes your cat. Hey, what's up? I took a poop, now find it. <laughs> right? <laughs> they they come out to eat poop. It's ridiculous. It's not fair. I, it's in the fat, the fat cats, man. They are honest. When my wife got home, I, I know what I do. I put like this. I put a pole in the cat's ass. It's a swifter. I do. I clean the house with it. I just stick in there and I clean the whole freaking house. I don't care. Don't moan at me. Take it easy. They make me crazy, you know. But uh, it's it, it, they're like step cats. It's 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 ridiculous. I, I can't stand them. And, and I go into the bedroom at night. My wife's sound asleep on her side of the bed. I go to my side of the bed and there they are, right. <laughs> And I'm pissed off right away because they're on my pillow for 20 minutes doing this stuff. <laughs> yeah, marking their turf, they're rubbing their ass on it, you know what I mean? I'm like, that's where I put my face. It's ridiculous, you know? Honest to God, they, it, it, it's crazy. The one cat comes out, I, it, it, it's, it's scary. I pick up the broom, I throw it at the cat, you know? The cat starts throwing up in the corner. It's ridiculous, right? Oh, I don't know. I travel so much for what I do, and I don't know about anybody in the room if you get nervous with airport travel like I do, but just, you know, because as a civilian, you can't bring a firearm or anything to protect yourself on a plane. So just do what I do, okay? When you travel, every man, woman, and child can do this. It's very easy. Right before takeoff, I stand on my chair, and I sing the Iraqi national anthem. And if anybody joins in, I get the hell off the plane. It's a great way to travel. New York City, I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City.
All right, everybody, that was Access. That is Gotham Comedy Live. You know, thank you guys for being such an amazing crowd. You ladies, you. you know, I want to say, I want to say something to my kids uh, who shouldn't be watching this. Thanks, guys. I guess, I, I, by the way, I do have, yes, I do have, I do have kids, which, you know what, I don't like when, when I tell people I have kids, I don't get, oh, you got boys or girls. They go, really? And then, are they okay? Uh, I do love my kids because I hate jail. <laughs> Don't you owe that one, really? Philip Seymour Hoffman, you were laughing your ass off. That's the one you owe? My God. All right, guys, let's bring up the comics from tonight. Give it up. Yes. You did a phenomenal job. A phenomenal job. Brian Chikaki, Liz Barrett, Ambrose Jones, and Jeff Norris. Phenomenal show. You guys were great. Thank you so much.